Level 8, P Stage 3, Exam Questions. A glass has juice and water in the ratio of 1 to 4. Let's just make a note that to start with. So it's juice to water is 1 to 4. Now that means to say one part of it is juice and four parts of it is water. Or to put it another way, one part out of five parts is juice. In other words, a fifth is juice. And four parts out of the five parts, in other words, four fifths, is water. I drink a quarter of the contents of the glass and then fill the glass back up with juice. Find the new ratio of juice to water. It does say show your working out and write the ratio in its simplest form, but that's something we should always do. So let's go back and think about this. I drink a quarter of the contents of the glass. So if I drink a quarter, three quarters of the contents must be left. So three quarters of this fifth of juice is left. And three quarters of this four fifths of water is left. Let's work that out. Of actually means multiply and if you're going to do three quarters times a fifth you multiply the three times the one and four times the five. So this three twentieths of the original juice is left. And 3 fourths of 12, 4 fives of 20, 12 twentieths of my original water is left. Now I top up the glass with juice. So therefore, this amount of juice was left from the original mixture. I add a quarter of a glass of juice. So this is the total amount of juice now in the glass. Let's add these two fractions together. To do that I need to change this quarter into twentieths. So let's rewrite that as five twentieths. So therefore, after topping the glass up, eight twentieths is juice and twelve twentieths is water. Therefore the new ratio of juice to water is 8 twentieths to 12 twentieths which is the same as 8 to 12 I can cancel that by 4 because there's 2 fours in 8 and 3 fours in 12 so this is the final ratio of juice to water after topping it up Find the area of this shape in terms of x and y. Now this is what we call a composite shape because it's made up of several other shapes. And we could split it into rectangles. We could do that several different ways. I'm going to choose to do it like that. So if I find the area of A and the area of B and the area of C and add those together, I will have the total area of the H shape. By the way, on your exam paper, you could write this sort of thing on your exam paper and it would show the examiner your way of working. OK, the area of A is this times this, in other words, 6x times 2x, which is 12x squared. The area of this is 3x times this distance, which we know is y. So that will work out the area of B. And the area of this is also 6x times 2x. So that gives the area of that part. So the total area, which is in fact what we're after, is that 12x squared added to that 12x squared, plus the area of the part in the middle. So there's your answer. We have it in terms of of x and y. Now let's look at this solid, this prism. 
which actually is exactly the same as what I've just done. And the volume of any prism is the area of the end, or the side, times the length. So the volume of this prism is the area of the end part, which I've just worked out, multiplied by the length, or how deep it is, which is this distance here. So the volume of this prism is this, multiplied by the depth. And we're told that the volume of this prism is in fact this equation, sorry, this expression. So what we've written down actually equals this. Find the depth. Well, in other words, I need to rearrange this and make depth the subject. So depth is going to equal this. divided by this. But before I think about that, let's think about factorising this. There's a common factor between 24 and 3 of 3. There's a common factor between the x squared and the xy of x. So I can factorise it and leave myself with 8x there. 3x times 8x is 24x squared, and leave myself with just y there. Because now I can cancel. I can cancel that 3 with that 3. That bracket of 8x plus y with that 8x plus y, and I'm left with x squared over x, and that itself cancels to just x. I'm not sure how you feel about that. If you're not sure, spin it back and have another little listen. We have one, two, three, four calculations. And it says which calculation will work out 70 is increased by 9%. Let's look at 9%. 9% as a decimal is 0 0.09. So if we multiply anything by 0 0.09 we will be working out 9%. However, if we multiply by 1.09 we do two things. We work out 9% and we automatically add on 9%. So this will work out 9% and add on 9%. In other words, it would increase by 9%. So 70 multiplied by 1.09 will increase by 9%, which is this one here. What do the other calculations work out? Well, let's look at this one. Now, in fact, if we consider 90% multiplied by 0.09 works out 90%. And this, of course, is the same as this. So this works out 90% of 70. This one here well, if that increases by 9%, this increases by 90%. So 70 increased by 90%. And this one, I've already mentioned in my chatting up there, works out 9%.